on this James the Bike Guy, we're ditching the rigid seat post and installing a dropper post. And I'm here to show you how to do it. This is one of the most crucial upgrades you can make on your mountain bike to have a much better ride and it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. If you have any questions throughout this, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you as well as I'll have what I use linked down in the description in case you need something. So let's go ahead and upgrade Project TriFox with a nice race face dropper post. So what we have going on to the bike today is going to be a race face AFEC dropper post. Uh, this is a pretty nice dropper post come in a few different lengths and I've measured out that I think I want the 125 millimeter length which is what we have here. Now this is a gas charged dropper post so it uses a standard cable to be able to actuate the dropper mechanism which is going to make it a nice and easy install but one thing to mention is the race face dropper posts don't come with a lever and that's actually the case on a lot of them so what I chose to do was I got a lever from Bontrager this is a 1x style underbar lever and the reason I chose this particular one is because it actually clamps the cable at the lever instead of at the dropper post and you'll see exactly why that matters a little later on but in my opinion if you get the chance to buy a lever make sure you get one that clamps at the lever here because it's going to make your install a lot easier and a lot cleaner. So once you've selected the dropper post that you're going to run on your bike, the next step is to go ahead and begin the installation. And I generally like to start by installing the housing for the cable that's going to operate the dropper. Now this housing is going to be the same as a standard shift cable housing. So you can use whatever you want. Most of the time, like in the race face, it came with its own housing, which is a nice feature. But of course you can run higher quality housing like Shimano's SH41 housing which is what I've put onto this bike. This bike's internally cable routed so it's a little bit trickier than an externally cable routed bike and let's jump in to getting that cable on there. So to run the housing typically you'll uh, start right at the seat post here. We're basically gonna keep running this till we get all the way down into the frame. As we push down the housing's going to come out so we can kind of pull everything through. And I always like to leave a zip tie and tie up the end so that way when we're tugging through on this cable, we don't have to worry about uh, it coming out as we start to string it internally. Start sending the housing back up into the frame because what we're hoping for is that it's going to come out at a junction at the top of the frames. So we need to pull off a little exit for the dropper post cable because as you'll see when this uh, gets pulled out here just like that we're now going to have a nice entry point uh, to be able to get that that cable so if we stick our finger inside basically what I'm going to be reaching for is the housing and I actually have it right here There we go, got it in hand. Give a little bit of pressure while you're doing this and out it should come. Now, when you're stuck in this kind of position, you can use just a small pick to help pull it through. Once the housing's been routed, you're gonna wanna leave a little bit extra because we wanna do the cutting pretty much after we get everything set up. So the cable routing has been routed inside of the frame, but I next want to be able to install this dropper lever where I think it's going to fit best. So in my case, I've got just a front brake on here. I'm not running a front derailleur. So I'm going to get the brakes all set up where I think is going to be about right. And that's going to help me make the selection on just how long the shift cable will be. And you're going to install an underbar lever like this Bontrager lever right in the same position that you would have otherwise installed a shifter. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this inboard of the brake lever and get this snugged up where I think it's going to work best. So I've got that put here, thumb. I think that operation is going to work nicely, nice and uh, 
tucked underneath the handlebar. I think I'm going to rotate just slightly. So with the lever in the place that feels right, the next step I need to do is start to install the dropper so that way I can get the housing cut to length in just the right place. We're going to want to be able to install the dropper post into the frame and get this housing to line up exactly where we want it to. And this is where that lever comes into play that allows us to adjust the cable at the end because in most cheaper levers or more basic setups, what will end up happening is we have to adjust the cable length uh, down in the frame, which makes for a real pain. And so with a race face dropper and a lot of others, it's gonna come with this little barrel. And what this barrel does is it lets you install the cable head at the front of the bike, and then the shift cable comes up through the housing. You slide this onto the end, just like so, tighten it up, and then that installs into the dropper post here. It's a little bit of a pain to get it set up, and that's what's gonna operate the bottom of the dropper. The challenge is you have to get this cable length pretty much perfect with the housing with this down inside of the frame. So that ends up being a real trouble. So instead, you run a brake cable, which the brake cable's barrel end would go into the bottom of the dropper. And then you'd be able to take the cable and just slide it right down into the frame and then cut and adjust up at the lever, which is a much, much easier way of doing it. So we'll take the fresh end of the cable, slide that into the housing, and this is being sent up towards the front of the bike and then slide it into the dropper. Those all go together. And now I just got to feed this into the frame, making sure to pull the excess housing out and uh, get that right into place there. So once we have our housing all the way pressed in after dropping the seat post into the frame, what we're going to be looking for is to set up the length of the housing so that it ends in the lever right where we want it and the amount of length is proper too. So for instance, you can see with the brake and the shift housing that we have installed, what I want to be able to do is twist the handlebar 90, still have a little bit of room, but when it comes out straight, it's not sticking so far out uh, that it's going to be unwieldy. So we're going to do the same thing with our housing here and basically want it to be able to go, oops, get that under, want it to be able to go 90 degrees, not too bad, press out, and uh, I think all of that's going to match up. So what we'll do is we'll take our cable clippers and we're just going to make a quick mark where we want that to be. So just a quick mark. We're not going to cut all the way through because if you remember from before, we put our shift cable in this housing. And that's because once we've done this, we have to go back to the dropper. I'm going to slide it back and now we can pull out the dropper post and the shift cable. Now our housing is free to be cut. So we'll look back at the housing. We'll find the spot that uh, we made the mark on. Give that a quick snip. Give it a quick file. That way it's nice, flat and flush. We can take our ferrule, pop it on and uh, slide it into the frame. So you'll see right now it's way too short, but that's okay because when we put the dropper back on, this is going to slide back up and the positioning's going to come back right where we want it. So I'm going to drop the cable right back into the dropper seat post. And where we are here, we've come to where that cable is now sliding out of the lever, which is just what we want. Get these lined up.
and get this pressed right into the frame. So once that's in the frame, we can now run our shift cable right through. And so now we can go ahead, tighten up the cable on the lever. And this is where having the adjustment at the lever is just so nice. Because what we're looking for is that when we press down, we get definitely some operation. You can feel some resistance, but when it's up, it's not free stroking. So I'm gonna give this a few tries, try to stretch it out. You see how it's not coming out? That's because we've just sort of settled in the cable. So tighten that up. So we'll pull out slack one more time here. That goes on and the dropper lever feels great. So before we cut the end of the cable off, uh, I just wanna make sure everything's operating like we expect. So we'll go ahead and press our dropper lever, push down on the dropper post. It slides down just like we expected. And with any luck, we'll push the button and up it comes. So now we've got to cut the cable and we're pretty much done. So with these, we're just gonna cut this nice and tight in. The reason for that is we want it to just hide underneath. Take a cable crimp, get it slid on, give it a nice crimp, and uh, now it's gonna operate perfectly smooth. And just like that, we've got the dropper post installed, ready to work, and the rigid seat post is off in the trash. So, uh, pretty easy and simple. I mean, start to finish, you might expect that this would take you maybe 30 minutes to an hour with a couple of tools just for the, the cable clipping and housing cutting, all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, uh, I'm just off to set saddle height and get my saddle on here, and it's ready to ride. Well, thanks so much for watching this video today. Be sure if you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. It lets me know that you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts or want to tell me what I could have done better, as well as be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this in the future.